Hey, everybody. It's good to see you. Um, if you've been watching on YouTube, you've had a little bit of dead air. We're sharing this on Facebook Live. As a matter of fact, we'll fix the shift over and make sure we are on Facebook Live. Just hold on with us for half a second. Um, half a second here. You are with us on Facebook Live. Make sure we're all online today. Mm -hmm. Make sure we're correcting all of our technical difficulties of the past. Um, we're rolling up. <clears throat> And it looks like we are cool. Very cool. Hey, a little bit of a, a little bit of a delay, but okay. Well, it's good to see everybody today. Thanks for tuning in to Maples Connect. Uh, Stephen Sparks, uh, pastor, and Sam Jones, pastor, um, checking in with you today. Um, I've asked Sam to lead us in our devotion for today. So, Sam, what word do you have to bring for us today? Well, um, so if you've been watching Pastor Stephen for the last few days, he has been unpacking resurrection for us. And um, I was really moved by his devotional yesterday. And in that devotional, he mentions uh, a scripture passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And today I actually want to dive into that um, with you just a little bit. And I want you to, and I'm going to put a little bit of a spin on, on the concept of resurrection and what it should mean to every one of us. Uh, so we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through, what's it? 1 through, uh, 1 through 10. So um, before I read the scripture though, I want you to think about this. I want this to kind of be simmering just a little bit. And that is the difference between seeing and believing. You know, we were all brought up to say that seeing is believing. But uh, I'm going to put it, like I said, I'm going to put a little bit of a spin on it. So in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Paul is, uh, one of the things I love about this, this particular scripture speaks to me because Paul is being, um, you know, he, he talks a little bit about himself in this passage as well and how he was changed by the resurrection. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation today because I think that version of the Bible really gets it. And he writes, Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. For I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. But whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. I absolutely love that last part right there. God was working through me by his grace. We often ask when we open uh, staff meetings, prayer meetings, uh, where have you seen God today? And again, this goes back to what I asked y'all to talk about is the, the seeing and the believing. And I can remember um, my first encounter with Jesus Christ, uh, my first real encounter with Jesus Christ. Um, it happened about 11 years ago. 
Uh, 11 years ago, that's 2009. Summer of 2009, I was part of a youth mission trip uh, here at Maples. And we went up to, uh, to Chicago, to West Doors Church. And, um, and one of the things that um, we went to the United Church at Rogers Park which is located in uh, the north side of Chicago. And we were there doing some mission work. We actually got to sleep in the sanctuary. And that was just such a very, very holy place to me. I can remember because I am, uh, I'm somewhat of an, uh, I've been described as somewhat of an early riser. <laughs> um, <laughs> not all the time. Uh, I sleep in sometimes. On your birthday? Yeah. Okay. Not lately. I haven't slept in very much. Um, but, I would get up because I, it was hard to sleep in that, that very cold, drafty sanctuary. But I can remember getting up before anybody else was and going. Uh, actually, they had a balcony, so everybody slept in the balcony area. I'd go down into the sanctuary and sit, and I would just I would pray, and I would talk to God. And I can remember, and this was around 4, 4.30 in the morning, how the Lord spoke to me, and he sent me directly to the Psalms. And uh, I'm going to switch over to the Psalms real quick. Uh, Psalm 16, 8 through 11. And this is how my heart was strangely warmed, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Psalm 16 8, uh, 16, 8 through 11. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. And I can remember after reading that and meditating upon that, how I I, I got on my knees four o'clock in the morning. I've never told this story to anybody. So any of the youth that are watching that are now grown up that remember that trip, uh, you didn't know this. Um, and, and that just really convicted me because now all of a sudden, because I believed I could see. Now, going back to the Corinthians passage, there is something in there that kind of, uh, that, that really caught my attention. And being in seminary, I've actually been living in 1 Corinthians for a good mm -hmm. month. So, um, and it's right here where he says that in verse 8 of chapter 15, last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. What Paul is talking about, Paul was not alive. Uh, and he was not on the road to Emmaus, as we've been looking at. The encounter came on a different road uh, later on in life, uh, the road to Damascus. But in the next verse, Paul really uh, is, uh, he, he really admits something about himself. He does this in a few parts in the New Testament, but he really admits something about himself when he says, I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. And now I'm reading that and I'm going, even me, we all have the power to see. And I'm not talking about seeing with your eyes. I'm talking about seeing with your heart, opening your heart to what the resurrection, but rising. Let me give you another example. I read this story um, the other day about a guy named Bashir Muhammad. Bashir? Bashir. Muhammad. Bashir Mohammed. Okay. He is a 25-year-old Syrian refugee living in Istanbul, Turkey. He's had quite the journey. Uh, in 2011, the Syrian civil war broke out, and it's still going on today, and it's, uh, it's become a multifaceted, uh, complicated thing. He initially fought on the front lines for the Kurds. That's the Syrian Free Army. I'm not going to give you a history lesson, I promise, but I just want to give you some context. In 2012, he defected to the Nusra, which is a, an offshoot of Al Qaeda, which was which was fighting among the same sides as ISIS at that time, and he got radicalized uh, through through what they were believing and through their propaganda. He became so radicalized that he he believed that killing people uh, was in the name of God. The propaganda had completely warped his mind that killing people had become second nature to him. It wasn't until he realized something in a, a few years later, and I, this is probably somewhere around 2014, maybe. He was witnessing the people that he was fighting with carry out an execution where several of the innocent victims were tied up and they were run over by bulldozers. 
he got to thinking, he says, how are we any different than they? He took his young wife at that time, and then he fled to Istanbul. Mm. While in Istanbul, his wife, his young wife, got sick, and she was not doing too well. Mm. He had a relation, he had a pretty good relationship with his cousin, who also lived in Turkey. Now, his cousin was a Christian. When they, when they found out that his wife was sick, he said, put her on the phone. We want to pray for her. Now, Bashir was like, whoa, I'm not doing that because he had been taught to revile Christianity. So he really wasn't comfortable with that. And so eventually he gave in. And they put on the phone and they prayed for her over the phone. She got better. And that piqued his curiosity a little bit. He had to ask his cousin very carefully, because keep in mind, he's living in Turkey, a predominantly Muslim country. Mm -hmm. He had to ask his cousin if there, is, if there is clergy he could put him in touch with so he could ask more questions about his faith. The seed was planted. He put him in touch with the cleric and started having regular conversations with him. He gave his life to Jesus. Mm. His wife got better. And he declared that the resurrection had completely changed his life. Today, you can find Bashir Mohammed every Sunday afternoon in his apartment in Istanbul leading a Bible study. Guess how many people are in it? Eight to 15. Wow. On any given day. Not going to lie, Bashir is still afraid for his life. He's afraid that being a former um, terrorist, right. that he's got a target on his back. Uh, the New York Times interviewed him, and that's where I got this story from. But it was so powerful to me. They interviewed him and asked him, well, what do you think about that? He says, well, yeah, I do worry about that. I worry about the safety of my family. But I trust in God because I have seen the resurrection. Isn't that interesting how we all come and experience Christ and the power of the resurrection in different ways? For me, it was in that old drafty church built in 1900 in the north side of Chicago. And I've encountered Christ in many other different ways and different places, places I never would have dreamed of. And can you imagine a former Al-Qaeda terrorist giving his life to Christ? Praying, leading a prayer group, leading a Bible study group in his apartment that is the power of the resurrection. In a way, Bashir is a lot like Paul. Mm. Paul spent a lot of time persecuting the church, some pretty bad stuff he did. But even he. So if seeing is believing, I'm starting to wonder. Maybe it's the other way around. Once you believe and once your heart is transformed, you allow Christ's resurrection to speak to you, then believing is seen. That's right. Are you open us a prayer? Yeah. Father God, we come to you right now. We just thank you so much um, that we can believe. Um, and um, sometimes our sight is limited and, and we really can't. We really can't see is the ways that we really want to see. Um, but Lord, help us to believe where we have not seen, where we can't see the end of the road, where we can't see the end of the journey, where we can't even see the end of the driveway. Lord, help us to believe in all places and at all times and put our full trust in your grace so that we might know you are Lord. We will give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. And for your sake we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Um, some of you are having a hard time commenting because you have to log on to YouTube Live uh, to comment. If you will drop over onto our Facebook page, you can put your comments there um, in the oh, Facebook wow. account. Uh, Sam will be monitoring those um, <clears throat> as well. Um, and we will see anything live if you're logged on to YouTube, if you have a YouTube account. You can log in and we can see your comments here as well. So um, how is it with your soul? How are you doing this week? Um, how's it with your soul, Sam? Uh, my soul is good. I, my eyesight, I think, is with, with all the Zoom meetings and uh, distance learning and things like that. I'm tired of looking at a computer screen, except to talk to y'all. I love that. Well, you know, you do have to maintain health and uh, what, looking at a screen is never uh, ideal. And the longer you do it, the harder it is on your eyes. So That's right. take care of yourself. Amen. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, just very busy, just like you. And, um, trying to figure out what's next and who's been left out. You know, one of the things that concerns me is that maybe we're missing somebody. Maybe we're missing some of our people that are connected to our church that are, are not staying connected as well as they'd like, or we'd like particularly. Um, if you know somebody that um, we've missed that maybe is not as plugged in, uh, maybe they're not able to watch on Sunday morning. They don't have the technology um, let us know. We would like to reach out and figure out a way to help them plug in. Um, we are trying to think through every one of those steps um, with all of our folks from our oldest to our youngest, to the most technologically adept to our least technologically adept. We're trying to create processes by which we can actually uh, communicate and um, be with each other in ways uh, that are low tech and high tech. Um, I know that we've all been anxious about what it looks like to come back and we're going to talk that and talk about that in just a little while on what, what's possible out there, what, what may or may not be possible. But we um, have got something coming up on the 17th, which is supposed to be baccalaureate Sunday, which would be our, the Sunday before the seniors graduate. Um, and of course we won't be live likely on the 17th. Um, so we want to read off the names of our seniors tonight, um, and then we're going to tell you what we we would like. So, so should I read their middle names? Because we've got the whole list here. Of sure. All of them. Okay. Sorry in advance. <laughs> uh, although I like my middle name. Yeah. What and is it? William. Will. We did this two year two two weeks ago. Didn't we? Yeah. Did I forget that? Yeah, you're Lawrence. I did remember. Oh, yeah. He's a better man than I am. I doubt it. Um, William Samuel William yeah. Samuel. So we have Anna Ruth Doddridge, Landon. Okay, and Anna Ruth is Lewisburg. Lewisburg. Yep. Okay, we got Landon Thomas Gaines. He's DeSoto Central. Okay, uh, John Cooper Little. He is Lewisburg. Lewisburg. Uh, Abigail Carolyn Long. She's Olive Branch. Uh, Andrew Lee Cole. Is uh, I forget what school, uh, maybe Lewisburg. I don't remember, I don't have them in front of me. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Rachel Elizabeth Olive, I believe, is Lewisburg, as is Andrea Caitlin Payne. Uh, Abby Nicole Peacock is DeSoto Central. Eason William Treadway, see, he's a William too. Oh, he said, uh, Lewisburg. Jacob Joseph Treadway, Lewisburg. Morgan Faye Vanderberg, Lewisburg, and Anna Magdalene Klein, also Lewisburg. And by the way, did you know, Stephen, we have two salutatorians on this list? Yeah, that's what I heard. Abby Long from Olive Branch and Morgan Vanderberg from Lewisburg. So awesome. Not only we have congratulations, youth, we have smart youth. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, so these are our seniors. We have 12. And what we typically do is we have a um, we have a table set up um, out in front. Um, in the foyer area, the foyer, um, and the hallway where seniors uh, decorate their own tables, and you can drop by and talk to them or drop off a graduation gift if you'd like. Um, but if we're not going to be live and in person on the 17th, and it looks more and more like that's not going to be possible, then we ask the question what can we do? Well, one of the things that we can do is that we uh, would like 
our seniors, and we're going to be sending an email out to each of them, but we're going to be asking them to do a little video for us, right? But we also want to ask any of you that would like to record a message to them, a congratulations, a great job, have blessings on you in the future. If you are close to one of these young people and would like to bless them and would like to, um, to encourage them uh, to go forth um, into their new world, um, then we would ask you to shoot that on your, on your camera, on your phone, do a little FaceTime video, send it to us at either Sam at MaplesChurch.org, Stephen at MaplesChurch.org, or Joey at MaplesChurch.org, and we'll, we'll compile them, and we will show a video montage on um, the 17th. Yes. And then we're going to be looking towards a send-off um, in August, uh, a blessing on these folks as they would normally be starting back to school. They've been doing that for 12 years, 14 years, um, 15 years since uh, kindergarten, preschool. Mm -hmm. Um, but this will be the first time that they will not be going back to a public school in the state of Mississippi. So <clears throat> that we will be blessing them as they go forth into the next stage of their life, um, hopefully in August, late July, early August. Um, and so watch out for that. That'll be announced. Uh, we'll be blessing them. Uh, we have a Bible that is a gift that we always give to them, a life application Bible. I think the boys are brown leather with brown accents. Mm -hmm. And I think I heard today that the, Girls is teal, teal. Um, so that's nice. That's going to be really nice. Um, the deadline for these videos is going to be May 10th. So if you would like to bless these folks, um, do that. If you have a, a video of them from younger days, please send us that. And all of this is going to go out in, in our constant contact and in emails to the parents uh, today. Um, so if you're watching this, um, you don't have to say anything to them. <laughs> um, um, I'm not sure any of them are watching. We're not trying to hide it from them, but if they're not watching and my guess is they're probably not, you don't have to say anything about it. We can kind of let that be a surprise for them on that Sunday morning. So, um, we're sending the email to the parents, not the kids. So, um, anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's, it's always interesting. Uh, it's a big group. It's a big group. It's a big group. Um, moving on down the road and it's a tough year to graduate. And so to all the seniors, we, we pray for you and we pray with you. And um, we know it's, it's hard uh, to go out like this, but um, know that God has greater things yet in store for you. Greater things will yet be done. So what else? Um, food drive. Yeah. So okay. You know, so one of the things that has come up this week um, is that we will, uh, we got some folks that are hungry in our community and our local food pantry is shut down. And um, so we are, um, as a staff, tossing around the idea of a food drive uh, to provide meals for folks uh, that are at risk. And we haven't settled on exactly what that's going to look like. Um, we have talked about having drive through um, stations in the parking lot. Uh, one Saturday, you know, I know other churches have done that. Uh, we're going to be reaching out to America's Second Harvest and Memphis Food Bank mm -hmm. and other things like that. But we really need some folks that are a group of eight or ten folks that are willing to step up and take leadership um, of this project. Um, and I have to give credit. Mr. Sidney Vandenberg has called me several times the last few days and and there's folks asking about the food pantry. And um, right now, the Ox, the um, Olive Branch food pantry is not open to our knowledge. If you know something otherwise, please let us know. Or if you're connected with the Olive Branch food pantry and you are open, please call us mm -hmm. and let us know. Yeah. Uh, and how we can put people in touch with you and how they can get fed. Um, but in, in the interim, um, we hope to be able to to um, bridge some of the needs in our community. And if you are passionate about seeing hungry people fed and getting them the food they need, if you are one of those type of folks, or if you've just got a lot of time on your hand during this COVID thing, and you really are looking something to do other than, um, you know, binge watching um, whatever is the popular thing to binge watch, I guess, Tiger King, 
was for a while. And what's the new thing, Sam? I don't, I don't watch I'm TV. Not, yeah, okay. So <laughs> binge watching, you know, 1982 poker championship. I read, so the, I read theology. Yes, because you're in seminary. Yeah. Yeah. Siding life. It just, you know, just exciting. Transformative. Well, it is that. Riveting. It, it will change you. Uh, <laughs> so, um, we, if you would like to do that, we'd love for you to let us know and comment back down below. Call us again, email us sam at maplechurch.org or stephen at maplechurch.org. Yeah. Um, so that's going on. Let, sam, talk to us about what's going on with life groups. Okay, so we've gotten two go up and running. Um, we've got our one group, it's the moms of teenage ers, and bless them for that. Uh, we got a couple's one that has started. Uh, both of those are full. Um, we have one that Delia has uh, kind of started. Um, I, forget, I think it's room four. I'm losing count, but it's for mothers of kids age five and under. So far, we have six. We could use a couple of more. So uh, you should have gotten a constant contact yesterday on how to register for that. So if you're a mom, uh, of children with five and under and need to do life with some people that are in the same uh, boat uh, as y'all, please click on that. And now, you know, you ever, you ever been nudged, Stephen, like, like a friendly nudge? Oh yeah. I want to, I want to nudge some of the men out there to encourage you to start your own life group as well. Um, that would be great. So it just takes a couple of uh, willing and able men to just sign up for that life group, start recruiting now, and we'll get the ball rolling. Um, so far, I think it's been it's gone really well. It's still in its, uh, you know, it's been birthed, but now we're in the nurturing stages of it. So, yeah. so please, uh, please consider signing up for life group. It's uh, it's it's definitely life changing. Um, right. So yeah, we really encourage that. Um, if if somebody wants to start a completely new group, Sam, how do they do that? Okay, so there are if you go to the the link which is it's on Sign Up Genius, uh, it'll take you to a place with rooms. Now, there's a couple of rooms that are already filled, and it won't let you sign up for them anymore because the ma it maxes out at 15. But if there's empty rooms on there, you just click one, and you tell your friends, hey, get on there and sign up for room, let's just say it's room seven. Let's fill up room seven, and then they do that, okay? And what, what some people have done, I've noticed, is that when they're the first one to register, they kind of type in the comment section, of what kind of folks they're looking for, like what common interests are. Again, they could be anything. Like I said, we've got couples, we've got mothers of young kids, mothers of teenagers. Um, uh, and, you know, it could be a, a study, whatever you want to do. That's just to kind of help you get some direction. But the rooms are out there. We have 20 rooms set up right mm -hmm. now. So any of them are up for grabs. You know, it's feels like it's like a hotel. We have, we have vacancies. So so yeah, consider to sign up. And if you really want to know more, just just shoot me an email. Okay. And and let us know. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. I'm, we're yeah our today. goal is that 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 folks that have connected through uh, Facebook Live um, and otherwise to the church that may not be in a small group or a, a Bible study or um, a Sunday school class uh, will plug in through one of these groups and find real connection. Um. Lastly, um, well, next to last, we got a children's Zoom call tomorrow night, 6.30. We had a great time the first night, this uh, last Thursday night. And so we're real excited about next uh, tomorrow night, 6.30, 6.30, 6.30, 6.30. And we hope to have no technical problems. We think we've got some of that issue worked out. And we're going to be real excited about that. Um, they need some. They well, yep, yep. But Mr. Joey and Joel will be there helping lead singing but not only will they be there to sing and do the motions but there will be from some other people do you know who the other people are huh 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 do you know who the other people are huh 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 do you know who they are huh I don't. huh yes you do because they're you oh and that's right. me <laughs> and miss sarah so there's three of us and so there'll be five of us and if you want to get in on the game you can join in um can i bring my guinea pig <laughs> um to the church oh that's right in the yeah. sanctuary does it does it do or does it, you know? No, she's pretty big. Does it, you know? You yeah, know. she's pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to leave the guinea pig at home. Um, but we encourage you all to bring your guinea pigs online if you'd like. But um, all kids, um, youngest to, um, I think we're saying fifth grade? Mm -hmm. Fifth graders? Yeah. 
Um, if you're in fifth grade right now, um, tune in. Uh, check in on each other. Uh, everybody had a lot of time waving at each other and saying hi um, last week. And so we're real excited to see each other again. But we do. We do have homework. You got some, some stuff. We're going to do a craft, um, online craft tomorrow night. Um, we're going to be reading the story of the Good Shepherd from John chapter 10. And if you want to do the craft, you're going to need a sheet of green paper. Now, that can be a green construction paper. It can be a green cardstock. It can be a regular old green paper. Or it can be a white paper that you colored green. It matters not. Just a green paper. And then you need eight to ten nice cotton balls, nice sized cotton balls like to put makeup on. Um, it, in a pinch, if you don't have any, don't necessarily go to the store and get them. But in a pinch, 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 pinch. That's the northeast that's Mississippi pinch. coming out of me. You can pull the fluffy part off the end of Q-tips and use it. Did you know oh, that? Yeah, yeah. that's cotton. Yeah. It's cotton. Or you can go to a, a bottle of, of medicine and pull the cotton out of that if they have that. Mm. Leave that little packet of gel in there and take the cotton out. Um, just whatever you got. Um, or if, if you have to, maybe a white rag that you cut up. I mean, just bring something that's kind of whitish. Um, glue. We need some either some stick glue. Uh, I really suggest some Elmer's glue, um, wood glue. Let's not do super glue, um, but just something like an Elmer's glue, washable glue. Um, that'd be perfect. And then a magic marker um, that you can draw with. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about being sheep, and we're gonna talk about shepherds tomorrow. Cool. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and we're going to make a craft together. We're going to sing together and we're just going to hang out a little bit, see each other. And um, we're going to have some more stuff loading for children. Uh, watch for your mind and um, for your um, email from the church. And we'll post it on Facebook. And if you're not getting emails from the church, please send us your email address at Jane at mapleschurch.org. Let's say that again. Jane, J-A-N-E, at maples, M-A-P-L-E-S, church, C-H-U-R-C-H, dot O-R-G. Now send us your email address, and we will put you on uh, the email list for the church. Um, so we'll see you tomorrow night at 6.30 if you have little kids, or um, if you have taught little kids here, and just want to check in with them, you've been missing them, then you're welcome to come on board as well. Um, lastly, let's talk about what does it look like when we come back from, yeah. from COVID. We, we have been um, efforting multiple um, scenarios, uh, depending on what the governor did. And last Friday, uh, the shelter in place was lifted, but much of the restrictions were maintained. The governor asked that we as churches continue to not meet um, in live uh, worship um, that we continue to keep our numbers below 10. And um, our bishop today um, issued guidance um, through a letter, a pastoral letter to the churches, asking us to not uh, return uh, to live worship or live gatherings um, of any sort uh, until the end of May, until May 30th or 31st. Um, and so as we're evaluating that, um, and we will be communicating all that to you. But our expectation is that when we do come back, that there will be limits on how many people we can fit in the sanctuary. Um, maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe 200, mm -hmm. depending on our size. Um, if our limitation is 100, that will certainly curtail our ability to do worship um, at our 1030 hour and make it more interesting. So along those lines, um, we are uh, evaluating having multiple services at the same time um, on the same campus, on this campus, but at different ends of the campus, uh, in Wesley Hall and the sanctuary at the same time. Um, and so we're gonna be putting a poll out in the next couple of days, aren't we, Sam? That's right. Um, we're going to be, Sam's going to be putting out the poll. And in case you don't know, Sam is our, um, is our online pastor. That is his job. And so his, his responsibilities are 
making sure that we're connecting online. Mm -hmm. And so he'll be putting a poll in the field uh, with you, and we'll probably send it out with constant contact as well. Um, and you can just shoot us an email if you got a thought about this. But if you'd be willing uh, to move to the other end of the building to worship at your preferred worshiping time, either 8.30 or 10.30, because we will have if to accommodate only 100 people at a time. We'll have to have multiple worship services. Um, so if you're willing to, um, to shift to another area of the building for worship, let us know. And we're going to put that poll in the field if you're willing to go to the other end. Um, and what differences would you want to see? What, what could be different that you'd be okay with? And what would you like to see different? And what would you like to see the same? Um, and if, if we maintain what we're doing in the sanctuary, um, maybe what would worship in Wesley Hall look like for us? Um, do you, would you love to hear a banjo? I mean, would you want some bluegrass music? Um, I, I got some Kentucky roots in me and I love, love some bluegrass, but not everybody likes bluegrass. Do you like bluegrass? I do. I, yeah. Like a banjo? I do. Mm -hmm. I love a banjo. Um, and we might could rustle up a banjo player. Yeah. When I was on the coast, there was a church, uh, Castle Springs, uh, and there was a group of people in that church had a gospel uh, bluegrass band, and they called themselves the Mule Skinners, and they played at a catfish house on Friday and Saturday nights, and they, they were great. Had an upright bass, banjo, fiddle. I mean, it was awesome. down from the mountains, uh, down home. So you know, if you're bluegrass. Um, if you like what we would call um, more, uh, more contemporary uh, type Christian music, if that's your thing if you like you know if you if you're a Kayla fan or if you're a Crowder fan or you know POD or whatever you know what and if you don't know who what POD is don't worry about it um or who they are actually um or if you would love um you know something kind of akin to um um you know 1990s <laughs> you know if if that was your happy place um, if you like, if you're like me and you like Michael W. Smith and Stephen Curtis Chapman and and that group, you know Hillsong. So that may be it. Um, if you are a if you are art traditionalist and would like to see us even be more traditional uh, with trifold amens and swinging the smoke and and processional crosses and chasubles and uh, even more high liturgy, um, then let us know. We're we're listening to you. We mm -hmm. want to hear from you. Um, as we try to think creatively about what we might have to do uh, for interim periods of time around separate spaces. And would you be willing to, to move to the other end for a little while until we can put 250 in a room or 350? You know, Sam, I, I did hear that, that like Lowe's home, home yeah. improvement store, um, you can put 500 people in Lowe's. I mean, they, they'll let you put 500 people in Lowe's. Wow, I didn't know. Yeah, so we could meet in plumbing uh, uh, for our our worship service, right? We could. We could. Would they have a pipe organ? Oh! 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 Oh, that is so wrong. I always get one. Oh, oh that, that is so wrong. It was very good, but it was so wrong. I always get one. Oh, dad joke. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You need to write that one down. I know. That one just popped into my head. Pipe too. organ. Very, very good. No, pro probably not. <laughs> so if you like Sam's jokes and would like him to put out a book or an anthology album mm -hmm. or something, let us know. Hey, we're glad you tuned in. We're hoping you're having a good week. We're really glad to see you, and we love you. Whether you're checking in tonight or later tonight or in the middle of the night or in the morning, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, if you're on Facebook, it's going to send you to YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, that's what it's going to do. It's going to. I know that might be kind of tricky to comment, I guess, but can you, can they comment? On they can YouTube? comment on YouTube if you log in. Okay. If you log in to YouTube and you have a. Your if Google. You, if you got a Google account. Right. Right. Okay. If you're a Google customer, you can log in on your Google account and comment. Um, let us know. Um, but we're really glad. We're up at the 40 minute mark. 
we've taken enough of your time. We sure do enjoy hanging out with you. And we kind of enjoy hanging out with each other. Um, we hope you see that. Mm-hmm. Um, high court. <laughs> oh. I'm putting that in the bank. Oh, goodness. All right, on that wonderful note, may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you, both now and until Jesus comes. Amen. God bless. Mm-hmm. Have a great evening. <laughs> and we are out. <laughs>